Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Peace Dealer. Holler at your boy. I hope you enjoy. We are going to be talking about Zero Degrees Pisces. It's a lot to talk about. So stay tuned, my friends. Uh, first of all, I want to reflect on this golden opportunity to do these zero degree, uh, horoscopes. I really do hope and wish I'll be able to continue them coming into this new, um, cycle. And other than that, thank you, Sun Soul TV, for having me. I'm glad that you enjoy and resonate with these. Zero degrees Pisces is also 30 degrees Aquarius. So on this day, fully expect to come into the ultimate, complete knowledge respective to this cycle we are concluding. You're definitely going to hear me speak so much more on cycles over and over as we move forward. And... If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure you hit up Sun Soul. Maruma too, she knows what's up. If you're definitely interested uh, in other horoscope daily interpretations that she has. However, one thing right off the bat that I want to tell you about this initiating transit that is featuring a closing sextile. Ooh, he said sex to Uranus, three degrees of Taurus. I don't know who needs to hear this. I've been saying that too much as a way. I don't know who needs to hear this, but the concept of weird is a total lie. I think you need to know this because it's okay to subjectively think of things as weird or normal, but the concept of weird and normal ultimately outside of subjective reasoning is not only farce it's stupid and it doesn't exist so really keep this in mind because you have a lot of people who lie to themselves and apprehensively inhibit themselves from taking action with other people or doing something because it's too weird because they're not comfortable with it i don't think this is normal Which is okay, once again, if you're ascribing this to a subjective rhetorical sense. But if you are out here really believing that things could be weird or normal, you have issues. You're weird. Just going to put that out there. If you really think that normal exists outside of your own subjective perspective, you're a weirdo. <laughs> You're weird. And that's coming from a certified weirdo. I just have to clear that out. Nip that in the bud. Because it's just, I don't know. It's its fascinating to see people run their lives with such illusions. And you know what? The sun in Pisces is going to make you clear of every illusion. Outside of yourself, within yourself. This is what it means for the sun to glare its illumination of awareness on Neptune during a Mercury retrograde in Pisces on Neptune as well. The reason why this season is going to be so amazing is every time the sun meets with Mercury, whether direct or retrograde, it emerges an epiphany, a clear conscious understanding with which we can process, in this case, divine information. Divine information is characterized as information that constitutes all five of your senses, your subconscious senses, and extra dimensional senses outside of this third dimension that incorporates fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and beyond that filters through you. And this is what accounts for intuitions, synchronicities. We need ways of relaying input of dimensional awareness far beyond the third. There's dimensions above us that exist outside space and time, if I'm saying that right, and can be aware of time simultaneously. You have 
in your vessel ability to perceive that not through your third dimensional conscious mind and that's why mercury doesn't like to be in pisces it likes to be in gemini it likes to be in libra logical clear concise pisces bridges in past present future in a vibe that gives you a feel of what's possible but it's hard to really derive productive logic this way except you will because of all this capricorn and taurus energy so very be very mindful you are stepping into the beginning of a brand new shift in the way you consciously conscious i just said i just made that word up if that's a saying all right if conscious was a verb this is changing the way forever you conscious we have no sagittarius we have no scorpio as you can see no libra no virgo no leo and the north node in cancer doesn't count we don't have gemini we only have cap pisces aries and taurus that's four energies guys that's all collective and individual no social energies this is not saying you can't be social because you, we don't depend on these energies to, to do what we want autonomously. It means there's no social energies being developed. Every energy is so focused on connecting all of us collectively. It's making it hard to discern what's your feelings, what's other people's impressions. And it's not meant for you to discern. Nothing is meant to make sense right now, which is controversial as all hell to say. Because that makes sense. You can't make sense of something that you're stepping into the initialization of being aware of. This is literally like turning on a virtual reality simulator that's augmenting your reality and allowing you to add facets of your imagination into your current experience. But with supernatural steroids that literally amplify everything you do and give you a literal taste of unlimited power. OK, the moon is going to be in Capricorn on this day, fresh off of Ca uh, Mars entering Capricorn. So it's not so much that Mars is entering Capricorn. Mars is entering Capricorn, sextiling the sun in Pisces, squaring Chiron in Aries, trining Uranus in Taurus. If that sounds like jargon, better study up. No. If that sounds like jargon to you and you don't understand that. Please understand that this entrance into Capricorn is following up a 248 year cycle with Pluto, a 12 year cycle with Capricorn and a 28 year cycle since 88 with Saturn. That is beginning a brand new cycle of harnessing power at the max peak level in order to redefine what integrity means to you. And so be very mindful moving forward, because if the actions that you are taking are not aligned with your greatest self, this is going to define your character. All right. This is not meant to fear monger you. It's actually meant to encourage you to uh, really realize how empowering this is as Mars transiting the South Node in Capricorn will be unpacking this early childhood and dare i say past life incarnation of every power that you've had we want you to see as mars going over the south node fruit coming up into this going over jupiter evolving awakening in pluto and then manifesting and constricting in saturn boom more powerful than ever however this zero degree pisces mark is now in a position to transcendently break you through as you come into awareness of your transcendent self. Aquarius season was meant to introduce the awareness of celestial beings relative to our development with them. For some of you, you've always known them. For some of you, you're learning about them for the first time. This is the knowledge of your higher being, your cosmic self. And this is now ready to bridge in into a much, much, much more divine experience that incorporates how willing you are to accept that which you don't know. Because there's what you know, there's what you know you don't know, 
And then there's what you don't know, you don't know, which trust me is infinite in quality. And you're going to see that once the sun goes into Pisces. And this is why if Scorpio tells you to trust, Pisces tells you to believe. Because you know what? There's certain things that you just can't explain in the moment. And you just got to go off on faith. Well, thankfully, you're not going to have to go off on faith for anything. But you're going to have to believe in yourself more than you've ever believed in yourself. Because what this Pisces season is transcending is your ability to harness all of your abilities at their max greatest level as you unlock and manifest your greatest potential. Mars begins its exact trine with Uranus and Taurus on this day. And that perfect sextile they make to the sun in Pisces is going to align your conscious awareness and subsequently your focus with Mercury retrograde to systematically reevaluate every way you derive meaning in what you do. It's on a day like this, you're going to look at everything you do and see it in a different way. Not a new way, in a different way. Some ways that you saw it before, but you weren't ready to really step into the way you communicate with each other, with others, the way you feel your emotions, the way you experience magic, most importantly, and how you collectively tie in that magic with everything else. This collective unconscious force will express itself through you as you dream a new dream. Please keep in mind the moon squaring Venus and Aries is going to challenge aspects of your ego to make sure you're still not out here caring how weird you look. You cannot be too weird. Subjectively, you can. Objectively, that doesn't exist. So you really need to decide who do you live for? It's very easy to say, you know, don't care about other people's opinions or expectations. But it's also very easy to chain a lot of what you do because you care so much about what other people are going to think about who you are. And, you know, once again, if we had more social centric energy, like if all this energy was in Libra and Virgo and Leo, I'd be like, go out there, get other people's opinions, because it's through these social dynamics and exchanges you come in insight. They're empty. Fuck what other people think. You can think that I'm lame as hell right now. It doesn't matter. That's not feeding my individual growth. That's not connecting me to the collective. Fuck what other people think. Like, like that's literally the message. And it's something that I can say over and over, but you must embrace. Not, let, I'm going to say this one more time. Like, if we had energy in the social signs, you don't need If The absence of it doesn't mean that you shouldn't care. I'm advising that you totally folk take that focus that you focus on what other people think and take it more individual to what you want to do to what you're building for the collective because this is tapping you into energy that is far bigger than you okay a super cluster light years away from you is far bigger than you in a planet that is probably like smaller than a speck of a speck and so you have to now incorporate that you're not just in your head. You're on a floating ball orbiting around the sun, which is traveling through a galaxy, which is, tra which is traveling through a solar system, which is traveling through a galaxy in a universe with other superclusters and other galaxies. And it's a day like this that reminds you where you are a part of in relation to the rest of this collective conscious unconsciousness and what i really want to say is this is where we get harry potter with it okay because once again the moon is making an 11th house aspect getting ready for a balsamic phase on this day as the moon is in capricorn to have you harness very deeply let's say the moon was let's say mars is initiating the whole process or let's take it back let's say saturn pluto and jupiter in capricorn has prepared your body. Let's say your body is a car. Pluto went in it in 2008 and it destroyed the old model of this car. And then Saturn has since come in and it's now built upgraded parts 
so that you can drive, I don't know, a 2020 car and not some 1958 whip that doesn't even drive automatic and still drives manual. And then Jupiter went through and spruced it up and gave it all those nice effects. Now you got Bluetooth? What? Now you got a rear view camera? You stunting on people? Your car's electric? What? You fly. Look at your body. You can, you have mediumship abilities now. You just woke up clairvoyant. Like, what the hell is going on? How do I, what do I do to harness this? Mars. Mars has now come in and that gives you the key. Are you ready to drive this car? That's it. Mars is the accelerator, baby. And the moon coming into Capricorn is turning on that car. Turning on that car, feeling how that car feels. Boom. Feeling the vibration of the car turn on. Oh my God, we're going somewhere. Where? A whole new dimension. You're literally stepping into the spiritual realm portal of Pisces. As we're going to go to the next season in Gemini, where we step out of the portal of the spiritual realm and begin to, through our minds, Gemini, make sense of this as we go to Virgo and complete that cycle. So stay dreaming, my friends. It's very essential you dream because Mercury gained a message from Neptune and it's that you're fucking limitless and there's nothing that you cannot materialize into form. And it doesn't matter if other people think less of you. You are you are the ultimate being. There is a version of you that is an ultimate being, considering that there are limitless possibilities. There's a version of you that basically found a way to hack the reality of your life because you pretty much are pimping your matrix and this is where what comes online is, are, are advanced concepts that will not make sense to you because there's no gemini and there's no virgo there's no sag you're not going to see into the meaning of it you just got to believe and it's going to feel right because it's everything you've been building up to manifest from within the depths of your being so with venus and aries starting this new love cycle it's inviting you to be more courageous with the way you express your pleasure with others. But the square to Capricorn is, yeah, I want to be original. Yeah, I want to be raw. Yeah, I want to be selfish. But is it an integrity? Is it is it for the greatest good of all? Okay. Is this something that's going to ultimately be right? And you know I say all the time, it doesn't matter about being right or wrong. It matters about being real. Today, it matters about being right. <laughs> it might as well be really right so that you're aligning to the path you're meant to walk and to the integrity you're meant to express. The next thing I need to say is th th there's an awkward sense of morality where people live their lives according to whether they're doing the right thing. And on a day like this, you want to make sure you're aligned right to your integrity. But you have to also remember you're not the hero in everybody's story, there are certain things you like to do that disgust other people and it offends them. And you know what the last thing you should do is, oh my God, sh let me change what I'm doing because it offends you. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't want to offend that person. I don't want to offend you. Okay. Let me not do what I want to do because I, I want to make sure I don't offend anybody. And it's like, no. In fact, if what you do is nasty to other people, you better be a nasty son of a bitch. <laughs> you better be even more nasty. Just make sure that that nastiness is in line with your integrity. Okay? And this is controversial. Everything about this energy is controversial. This is going to be really hard for people who have to be liked by others. Nothing wrong with being liked. You should want to be liked. Everything wrong with inhibiting yourself so that what you do is liked by others. If you forget that you have to like it first, doesn't matter what you do. Aries starts the wheel, B. You have to fuck with it first. You have to like it first. And then this is going to open the room for other people to like it. And you know what? There's some things you enjoy doing that other people find disgusting. That other people roll their eyes at. There's certain behaviors and habits that you have that other people don't like. But do you live for other people? Or do you live for yourself? Both answers are wrong. You can't just live for yourself because you coexist with other people. 
So you have to compromise. You can't just live for other people because you also exist yourself. You have to look out for you. But ask yourself, are you allowing your behavior and lifestyle to be that affected by others who aren't even in your life? Now, it's an exception if you're with a roommate, if you're with someone who who is directly affected by the consequences of your actions. Hey, seventh house, eighth house, you're going to need to compromise. But like, please understand that with squares like this, it brings outside influences of what you should do of what other people feel that you should be based on old traditions that are literally dying, literally dying. We're on the heels of a revolution. We're 2021. It's beginning. All right. 2023. It's already set. So like this is going to feel awkward. If you don't feel cringy, you're not doing it right. You have to be willing to champion aspects of yourself that are unique to you that you love to do. Whether people like it or not. And th- and this is where I say once again, if Venus was in Libra, if Neptune was in Virgo, if all these energies were in the social areas, I wouldn't adopt this approach. It can alienate you in a bad way. But those energies are empty. Okay? So really enjoy this because this is going to stack on you so much value and power with Capricorn that you're going to translate into value. And you're going to find that the method you take action moving forward is going to be enhanced by your ability to imagine near your experience ahead of you and literally come into recurring income, passive income, ways to automate your action, hence the trying with Mars and Uranus. And this is where things get funky, baby. They get strange as hell. But if you like that type of thing, like I do, I'm a moon Neptune, baby. Uh, It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun because it offers you insight into a different way of living, a way that incorporates abstract principles that you don't necessarily see, but you experience and feel and a way to pimp this matrix. So amazingly, you remember that you have all the power and guess what? You want all the smoke, too, because that square with Chiron and Mars is going to have you directly confronting insecurities from within yourself and from outlets that seek to undermine you. You will not be undermined. Look at me. You are the shit. You are fucking amazing. I don't care if I'm cursing. You are fucking amazing. I don't care what anyone has to say. I don't care if you've made mistakes. I don't care if you've done actions that you are not proud of. The fact that you can recognize you're not proud of that means that there's potential to really return to your greatness. I don't care what depression you've gone through. You are nothing less than incredible. And everything moving forward needs to reflect that you realize and recognize the incredible being that you are. I'm not saying this because it's nice to say. It's the truth. You're not alive for no reason. That goes against the basis of nodes existing. Every single waking moment that you're breathing is for a purpose. And it's on a day like that. You get to see what that purpose is on a higher transcendent level that connects you directly with the divine, the divine aspect of yourself and namaste, the inner divine in you that recognizes this within others. And with that being said, I'm now going to read the inside degree for 30 degrees Aquarius Trust me when I say this is going to be one of the most magical days and seasons we step into because every Pisces season that we had before had clashing energy to prepare you for how to kind of deal with this. Every energy we have now is fully supportive of it. Pisces is a weak vibration. I'm not going to lie. That doesn't mean Pisces suns are weak people because their whole identity is not tied to just their sun sign. But Pisces is the weakest vibration. It has to be weak. That's what makes it so magical. It lets go. It surrenders. But being that it's that weak, it is influenced heavily by the energy around them, just like whatever you put in water. And so the energy around it is this Capricorn energy molding and forming it and the Taurus energy grounding it. And then the Aries energy directing it with your inner fire. Because if you don't know, this is the entrance. This is the official entrance into darkness. We're going to have short light in Aries, but then that light's going to be snuffed. And we're not going to have 
any light until the sun in Leo and sun in Sag, but there's no outer planets in fire. A large pool filled with white water lilies in bloom. Integration and synthesis, putting it all together. Creative intelligence at its best. Having gone on ahead and seen what can be, yet suspending your vision so that freedom and open-endedness are honored. Living on many planes at once in intricate refinement. You have the ability to hold in place as many independent variables as become relevant. As an especially distinctive quality of unqualified or unconditional regard and respect for one and all. Universal brotherhood and sisterhood as the impulse of the future active now. So the reason why this is very, 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 very important is because this Aquarius season, each degree has been piecing together knowledge for you that you've come into day by day. And this 30 degree is the final picture, the final knowing moving forward for you to manifest that in Pisces to experience what this knowledge is so that you know what you're experiencing. And that's what makes this so amazing and uber badass, if I may say so myself. Really do keep in mind that you're going to be over the 17th, 18th, and 19th concluding on a final understanding that's going to just click in gear for you. And this is what's going to make the 19th so exciting because you're ready to move forward. You have the direction. You know what to do. You know how hard you want to do it. All you need to do is just tap into that greatness you're going to feel with the moon in Capricorn. That's going to have you feel into everything you know you're meant to accomplish because the South Node is here. So everything you're doing, you're destined to do. Okay. And other than that, you stay true as always. There's so much. There's so much more I want to say, but I'm going to have to end this here. And other than that, you guys stay blessed as always. Oh, there we go. You guys stay blessed as always. Like I said before, we don't have fire energy, so you you can't depend on spirit to show you the way. Spirit has shown you more than enough, and now you must let your inner fire light the way. And all I can say is, as a revolutionary, you, not me, you as a revolutionary, you need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You need to be comfortable with the fact that some people do not like you and they never will. And they will always come up with reasons as to why they need to disrespect you. It is your decision. Nobody can make you do anything. I mean, kind of, but not really. It is your decision to make their problems your problem. If you want to make that the, the, their problem your problem, you can care. You also have the decision to not let it be your problem and to be great because that's what you are. 17th, 18th, the sun in aqua is manifesting the close, the opening semi sextile with Saturn and Pluto. And this is going to manifest that power that's awakening in the knowledge of how to harness it. And you're going to step into the 19th with this magical experience to open up this greater adventure of your world. And you owe it to yourself to make it the greatest experience you can. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you stay blessed as always. Peace.